Shalom, friends of the Yoti Vav He. Blessed are those that have not seen, but believe. And blessed are those whom the Father writes His name and the name of His Son on their right hand and forehead. Because this is the very identity of your Saviour, Israel and Judah. So pay close attention. We're going to be studying the tabernacle this time and the four leading tribes of Israel and the cherubim on top of the Ark of the Covenant and how that all fits together as well as the star constellations. Now as we'll find out later on, Ron White said that those four angels around the Ark of the Covenant that he met, I just want to briefly go over these, the, the four star patterns, uh, the story they tell and here we see it's in DNA and even the serpent in the wilderness that Moses held up and um, that of course represented the Messiah all these prophecies in the Old Testament it represents Israel's Messiah and here also we see the astrological chart of the stars which also tells the redemption story of man and these symbols um, the eagle represents the northern tribe Dan as we'll find out the lion um, the tribe of Judah. Uh, Aquarius is actually the man, uh, which is Reuben, um, also the, the water bearer, and Taurus with Ephraim. Uh, that tribe also um, links with that. Now, I've read that these four creatures represent the Sphinx in Egypt, but the, the Sphinx is a hybrid creature, and the, the cherubim around Yahweh's throne is not hybrid because it combines. Um, four complete types of creatures and there's also a link with a seraphim which is a wheel within a wheel which transports the throne of Yahweh Elohim um, around the 3D universe I have also read that the dragon was once part of that um, cherubim and that was the part of the creation that fell and took one third of the angelic host with it which could be possible um, Again, this is linked with the five-pointed star, and this is why Yahweh rebukes um, Israel for uh, having any types of stars, um, because these stars talk about the star constellations, the redemption plan, the fall of the, the dragon, and so on, and uh, they talk about all these different things, so it's very important for us to understand them, get them in perspective, and I hope this study can bring you more understanding of the tabernacle, um, as the scripture claims as the scripture says by Paul, be not conformed to the pattern of this world. Um, so be transformed by the renewing of your minds and the coming of your Holy Spirit in your hearts so that the Torah itself can be written there just as it is, uh, just as it was and is and will be always um, in the heart of Yahshua, Messiah, our Saviour. Now as a sinful man starts outside the tabernacle of witness and ends up in the holy of holies whereby the high priest offers the blood sacrifice and that's what we of course read about in the book of Hebrews so if you notice the altar where the blood of animals was poured out is before the laver they do represent specific things such as the baptism of repentance uh, of water but in this study I want to focus on the tabernacle being the heart of Yahshua where he was pierced by the spear. The Bible says, out came blood and water. That's written in John 19.34. The blood of Yahshua was shed for our sins and the water was shed for the righteousness he would give us after his resurrection. Now 1 John 5.6-8 is a key scripture. It won't be found in any corrupt version um, of the Bible but it will only, only be found in the 1611 uh, King James versions where it speaks about the Father, Son and Holy Spirit being the three witnesses which are one of course Are there scripts heaven? in the New Testament okay. that say the blood of Jesus fell on the mercy seat? And I'd like to share with you 1 John chapter 5 Start with verse 7 it says that there are three that bear record or keep record in heaven. God the Father, the Word, who of course is Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. 
verse 8. And the three witnesses on the earth, which is the spirits, water, and the blood. There's also spirits and man in the earth, which is not of heaven. And that's why many people today say that they have the Holy Spirit and they don't have the Holy Spirit. You have your spirit that you're born with. Certainly, um, you know, we're born pure and innocent, but once we reach a certain age, we're responsible for our sin and we must be forgiven for that sin because this is, is part of the original sin that we've inherited because we've been um, brought up away from God. Um, and as even the Apostle Paul writes, there is a, an advantage to being brought up Jewish as a Jew because we learn the precepts and the Torah and so on. But nevertheless, we still have to be born again of this Ruach HaKodesh. Verse 9. If you believe the witness of man, the witness of God is greater. And this is God's witness of his Son, the Spirit, the water, and the blood that bears witness. That's pretty plain, isn't it? I didn't understand all of that before I saw the blood on the mercy seat. You will know if you've been baptized by the Holy Spirit. You know, spoke to some Christians that say they haven't felt, you know, much difference after the or baptism. Well, that's because they haven't yet received the Holy Spirit. You must pray and fast and ask the Father for the Holy Spirit and believe um, the Father when you're asking him and you will receive it. Um, and you may have to fast and pray for it because in uh, the first century church, uh, the apostles laid hands on people and they received the Spirit, but they also went through the baptism of John of repentance so they were ready to receive it. So this part of the tabernacle was what the Levite priests had to go through and it's no different now for this New Testament covenant which is in the blood not of goats or animals um, but it is by the blood of Yahshua Messiah, the Son, the Lamb of Yahweh Elohim that takes away the sin of the world. Now, as you may be able to read there, on the outside of the Holy of Holies is the layer of badger skin, which must uh, remind the priests that they are unclean man. Um, and remember the vision that Peter saw, that that which Yahweh has made clean, you know, uh, it wasn't talking about food there, it was specifically the Gentiles. So, you know, Yahshua didn't just die for the, the Jew and the Israelites. He died for any man who would accept him. And those who do accept him then are clean. And Yahweh say, you know, their sins have been paid for. And um, Yahweh no longer looks at you as an unclean being. You're now clean and sanctified by the blood of Yahshua. Now, Yeshua entered into the heavenly abode of the third heaven. And out him came water and blood for us. It is a symbol of the tabernacle, again, a fulfillment. The soldier pierced Messiah at his heart. Uh, again, uh, look at the tabernacle, and the heart of the tabernacle is the Holy of Holies. It was because of the law, or the Torah, that Messiah had to die for our sin. Because we, remember, um, are breakers of the Torah. We are sinners. As 1 John 3, 4 says that uh, sin is transgression of the law. Um, so there had to be an atonement, and this is what Messiah did in the shadow picture here of the cross. And whenever God looked upon that cross again, he would see um, the symbol of death by which his son would have to die um, as a replacement death for our sin, so that we can be made free from the effects of sin. And those whom the son makes free is free indeed, free from the power of death and sin. Again, it's written in Hebrews that uh, the Torah should be written in our hearts and minds in the New Testament the covenant. Again, water came out of the rock and manna came down from heaven in the wilderness and their clothes didn't wear out because Elohim did the work for them. So again, he did the work for us. Um, we don't have to achieve our salvation in any, any way. All we have to do is stay in the Messiah and it means that we won't break the law. And when we do break the law, we have an advocate. Okay, in heaven. Now I'd invite you to check out the link over at the sidebar for the rest, written in Numbers 2-2. Two, two. But I'll just go through the standard of flags of the four main tribes. 
Each tribe was outstretched towards four directions, north, south, east and west. Judah was the host leader from the direction of the east. His standard was the lion. Reuben is the leader of the south. His banner is the face of a man because he was the firstborn. Ephraim is the leader of the west and his flag is the ox. Dan is the leader of the north and his standard is the eagle because his name means judge. And as we see in this illustration, these are the four main equinoxes. Um, the spring equinox um, represents the Passover, the summer equinox represents the Pentecost, and the fall equinox represents the Feast of Tabernacles and Day of Atonement. But the one about the eagle, again, um, the Draco constellation or Scorpio, and it does represent the fallen tribe of Dan as well. Um, they're not mentioned in the book of Revelation. And the winter solstice represents the pagan mass or Saturnalia festival, um, which is satanic. Um, but um, if we look at it from a biblical perspective, it is the time of Hanukkah or near the time of Hanukkah.